Very happy to have Jeremy Martin, a member of our professional advisory board, coming to us live from uh, the University of British Columbia. You're actually not. You're back at home, I think. You've had your I am home now. to plant, right? Yeah, yeah. How many athletes do you work with in a day on average? Um, my uh, Most of my work is with the football team. Uh, so anywhere between 50 and 80 uh, in a day, and that's that's just at the university. And then um, I have my clients and uh, and lifters and athletes on the side as well okay now I know these are collegiate athletes they're they're all this is all varsity these are all varsity athletes you're working with so these are all the elite mm -hmm. uh, and so you probably don't run into this problem as much with those athletes but with some of your private clients uh, because it's something we run across people ask hey I read this in a magazine I won't name the magazines but I read this article in the magazine this workout so I'm gonna try this workout Yep. And, uh, and every time that happens, I kind of like shake my head because it's just like, oh, gosh, you know. Um, yeah. Can you just talk a little bit about that and give us some insight? How do you deal with your clients and how do you explain to them that everybody's an individual and you really have to have something that's more tailored to you? And by doing something, it really can be counterproductive if you just just because you got it out of a magazine or just because some other guy does it. Can you talk right. about that a little bit for me? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's it's a, been a point of contention for me with the the industry in general uh producing people's workouts and then prescribing them to the general population and you see that a lot in bodybuilding magazines yeah i mean i, I used to work i used to work for a number of them and and that's what we did and it, it never yeah. made a lot of sense to me either because nobody else would really follow that so right and bodybuilding's uh notorious for it and when i i really got a, a feel for why it, it didn't make sense was when I, I got into powerlifting and there were a lot of powerlifters and coaches who said, you know, just because this guy who squats a thousand pounds uh, trains like this doesn't mean that you should train like that even if you wanted to squat a thousand pounds because right. he didn't do that uh, from the outset. That wasn't how he started training. So um, let's talk about that, Jeremy. What we see lots of times in magazines is we see the end result. You right. know, I, I go into the gym here in Las Vegas and you'll see Jay Cutler or Phil Heath, you know, or Mr. Olympia, former Mr. Olympia, and you yeah. see them train. But that's how they train now at the point they are in their career now. You right. make a very good point when you go back or Ed Cohn when he was in his prime. You know, I <laughs> saw Eddie training when he was getting ready for a meet and and that's how he trained. And there was a crew of guys with him and they're all trying to do the same thing. The reality mm -hmm. is, is like you say, when they were building that foundation, uh, that's not what they were doing. And so it's just not realistic to, to do that for the average guy. Exactly. And, and, uh, and that kind of plays now into the fact that, uh, it doesn't mean that it's going to work for you, even if you were at the same level. And that's why you see, you know, the top guys in the world and where, whether it's in bodybuilding, if it's in the NFL, if it's wherever it is, uh, training completely differently, um, like seemingly divergent styles of training and they're yielding similar results. And a lot of the time that's, that's because of whether, you know, whether it's because of their build, because of their genetics, because of what stimulation uh, gives them the better results. It's, it's, it's all about finding what works for you. Um, and that's my job as a trainer and as a coach is finding out what is going to give us the results that we want um, with as little pain uh, or as little suffering on the client's end um, as possible. So for the average guy then that really that doesn't have a trainer and mm -hmm. is trying to figure out what to do to start, I mean, I know that's a very, very general thing and, and it can't be prescriptive, but can you give me a concept of what they should be looking for or looking at? Or, you know, we told them what not to do. Uh, yeah. Without being prescriptive and saying you must do this because we can't do that either. It's it's too general. No. Exactly. Uh, so what should they be looking for? How how would you how would you steer them? Uh, what I would say is is start broad. You know, is try try a, a little bit of everything if you want to put it that way, and take away what doesn't work for you and keep what does. And uh, a lot of people, unfortunately, start one way and, and only ever go that way. And this is this comes with the caveat uh, of saying that you should never try a program for a week and then jump to the next one. Right. Uh, 
you know, people will, people will very openly bash program jumpers. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, it's frustrating as someone who designs programs, uh, to see someone try it for a week and then, and then bail because some, well, right. Because you, I mean, do anything for one week and, and look in the mirror and, and, you know, it's yeah. to be negligible of it all. You have to give everything a, a fair shake, right? Exactly. Exactly. Um, so that's the big thing I would say is, is start broad, you know, try different types of squats, try back squats, try front squats, try a goblet squat where you're holding the weight against your chest, see what feels comfortable and see where you feel it the most in your legs, see what makes you the most sore, see what doesn't feel comfortable and then look and try and find ways to maybe make it more comfortable. Or if it just doesn't work with your body, then throw it out and work on the stuff that does. Um, it, it just allows you to test the waters of everything before deciding what thing is the way to go for you. And there's a great example of that. And what it is, is uh, years back, and, and again, I worked with many of the top bodybuilders in the world. And there was one guy in particular, and I unfortunately can't mention his name, but he was a top pro bodybuilder. And he just finally, finally, finally let go of doing barbell benches because right. he was just getting huge front delts, but his pecs weren't growing and they were disproportionate. And so he dropped that and he found exercises that stimulated his pecs. And, uh, and then that's what he did. And so, yeah. <laughs> but the thing of it is, is, you know, you can't say that bench presses are no good for you. They just didn't work for him. Exactly. And yeah. so that's a prime example of what you're talking about. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. And so, and then, and then I think I, I think at some point in time, it's also beneficial to work with a trainer at some level yes. and get some guidance because a, tr a really good trainer can evaluate where you're at and sort of set you in a direction. And then from there, um, you know, through self-evaluation, you're going to pick up enough knowledge that you yeah. can do most of it on your own. And that's, you know, I have uh, certain clients where they come in, I assess them, um, we do a consultation based on their goals. Uh, I put them through a workout and maybe we work together for a week where I see them a few times. I figure out how they move and what they need to work on. And then I draw up a program for them and maybe I don't see them again for a couple of months to check in, but we're contacting via email and we're adjusting the programming as needed, but they're starting to be able to walk into a gym and go, I should do this. I feel like this today. Maybe I should do that. I can't do this because someone's using it. I know what the alternative is. This feels wrong and I know why, so I can fix it myself. And that's what I want is I want people to have autonomy in the gym and and know how to train and know how to train for themselves. And this goes on to a whole other topic that we could talk all day about, but it's choosing the right tra trainer. So many trainers want to, you know – lead you along to believe that everything should be a secret and everything's a big mystery and only right. they have the key to unlock it. And reality is a good coach. If, if somebody is still telling you, you know, to eat chicken and broccoli, you know, and if they, if they still have to do your diet for you after right. the first few months, then yeah. that's a bad coach or you're just really daft. And yeah, uh, yeah because it's pretty basic. And, uh, and as far as training, again, a good coach will evaluate you, motivate you if needed and yeah. check your form, et cetera. But beyond that, you should, you should be tuned into what works on your body more than anybody else. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, I, I pride myself in my client's ability to look around the gym and know whether something, another person in the gym is doing wrong. You know, they'll, they'll turn to me and they go, should they be deadlifting like that? <laughs> <laughs> so you're just and judging I everybody now. Well, exactly. That's the, I teach them how to do that guy. Work, we don't even work out. I just teach them how to judge everyone else. Just walk through the gym tisking at everybody. Yeah, that's exactly it. <laughs> no, but I mean, that's important to recognize good form because it's a safety issue, but it's also a productivity issue. Yeah. You know, if you're not training properly, mechanically properly, you know, you're not going to get the benefit that you want. I, I always go through this, especially with women that want to build their butts. You know, mm -hmm. and they're they're doing squats for that. If you're quad dominant genetically, you know, you're not going to be activating your glutes. You're activating your quads. And so right. unless you alter that mechanically, you you know, it's not going to change. And so all the squats in the world aren't going to do anything other than make your legs bigger. And exactly. so, you know, that mecha body mechanics are so, so important. So I think that's, uh, you know, aside of the joke about judging everybody, it's important to be able to recognize good form uh, yes. when you're when you walk into a gym. And a good coach should teach you what good – form is and what good body mechanics are, are all about, you know, what the yeah. benefits are.
Listen, yeah. Jeremy, it's always a real pleasure talking to you, buddy. I wish you were here. We'd sit and talk all night over a, <laughs> a, a green smoothie. Yes. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> okay. You take care, man. We'll talk to you soon. All right. See ya. Bye-bye.